Hello, and welcome to another edition of Nerd's Corner, uh, back by popular demand. This is where I nerd out on studying old schematics from the 40s and seeing how these guys used clever little tricks to make these sets work with what they had available to work with back then. And uh, stumbled across this Crosley 56 PA slash PB schematic. And here you have the 56 PA with the knobs coming out of the top of the cabinet freestanding. And here on the PB, they're kind of built into the handle. Uh, it's the only real difference between the two sets. But if we come back here to the schematic, and I was looking at how they powered the heaters, the filament. So I followed this line down. Whoops, got to stay on the screen here, buddy. Hard to do with a mouse. And they're coming right off of the B+, plus, right off of the cathode through this 1900 ohm resistor. It comes back up, goes through the tube here, up, and then they just series string them. I don't know why they chose this particular path, but they go up and over, and then we come back in this direction, and we go down through this one, up and over, and back down to our B minus. Fair enough. I can live with that. But then something jumped right off the page. Hit me right in the face. Look here on this 117Z6 rectifier. There's a cathode connection. We come up, we come over, we go down, and we go into an anode they've connected the cathode to the anode and I'm like what the heck are they doing there now I've seen the 117 Z6 used as a half wave rectifier with the two anodes and the two cathodes tied together I've seen them used as a full wave rectifier um, using a transformer with a center tap and I've seen them used as a voltage doubler because they well the tube as you can see here has a separate anode and cathode for each side and they're all independent unlike something like a 5Y3 which has a common heater cathode for both the anodes this can be separated into two sections and I kept staring at this and I couldn't quite get my head around it so I drew up a different circuit let's get this one off the screen and we'll bring this one on so I drew this up and it became a little more obvious. Our line here comes in, goes through the heater, comes down to the other line because the heater has to be across the line. We go up through this anode, through this cathode, we loop over, we come down, we go into this anode and then into this cathode, that's that loop, and then we come back out with our B+. Plus and you know they've got them obviously in series but I was like what the heck's going on with the heater here I just couldn't get my head around what was going on and, and I had drawn this out exactly like they did in the schematic come out of the 3 s4 over to the 1 l4 and then back to the back and forth so I said I'm still not wrapping my head completely around this so I redrew the whole thing like so. And then it became pretty clear what was going on. We've got our line coming in across the heater and the rectifier. We've got our two diodes in series and it's about eh, somewhere between 15 and 30 ohms and these are numbers I threw on from the tube manual initially and I was just trying to figure out what all the voltage drops were going to be so on and so forth. But as you can see, we come in from the line, we go through our rectifier, and we've got our B plus here, and we have, of course, our B minus over here. Oops, I drew that a little too high. It should have been down here. I got a little exuberant with the mouse. So, things were looking a little better, and I was gonna do a very short presentation on this. This, of course, is our 90 volts going to our tubes. I had initially taken the maximum cathode currents from all of the tubes and totaled them up 
21 milliampere so I could figure voltage drops and I'd come up with like 17 volts and then I looked back at the schematic and saw what they were they said 90 volts here and 103 volts here that's a 13 volt drop across this resistor that told me they're not driving the tubes wide open which of course they wouldn't do so they're only drawing about 16 milliampere for the four tubes and bear in mind most of these tubes have a maximum current through the cathode of about five milliampere these little battery tubes so that was looking pretty good I had started initially to draw the capacitors in you can see where I erased it and there's actually a thousand microfarad capacitor here to take the ripple out of the heater string because you can't have any uh, and these resistors just represent the heaters you can't have any AC ripple here because you'll have a lot of hum. There's no cathode in these tubes per se. The filament is the cathode. These are very low voltage tubes running about 50 milliampere on a gossamer thin filament string. And uh, they're used directly. The, the filaments are coated and they are the cathode. So any AC you introduce there is going to cause a lot of hum in the circuit. So there's a thousand uh, microfarad cap across the filament string here and there's a 40 microfarad cap here and over here there's actually another 40 microfarad capacitor to take the ripple out of the B plus but I hadn't drawn any of that in because it just muddied the waters up as far as doing a DC analysis on the circuit I didn't really need it so I said okay I'm all set to do this video I had uh, started recording it and went upstairs went to bed and about two o'clock in the morning tossing and turning I, I just I sat up in bed and I said holy crap there's a problem with this circuit this thing's got a, a real problem and I came down well let's bring that one back on the screen here just for a minute the problem being this thousand microfarad capacitor right here on their schematic they listed this as being a 10 volt thousand microfarad capacitor now bear in mind there's 103 volts here going across this resistor 95 of those volts are being dropped by the current draw which is all well and good you end up with about six volts at this point and then you know that's spread across the four tubes you got one two three four five eight and you know it all totals up to around 6.8 volts for a tube drop and that's about what there is at this point in the circuit all well and good except this capacitor is rated at 10 volts what happens if this heater goes open the voltage is going to soar and if this one goes open you're going to end up with full line voltage or full rectified voltage going into this capacitor this capacitor is going to explode of course back in the day then a thousand microfarad capacitor was huge unlike today where you can get thousand microfarad capacitors the big ones a 50 volt rating the little one here is a 25 volt rating they're as common as ticks on a hound but even those if this 3s4 goes open that 50 volt capacitor is going to explode it's not going to work out so here we are, we are at 2.30 now I come downstairs and fire the computer back up 2.30 a.m. because there was no way I could go to sleep until I'd looked at this again now ignore this right here this wasn't in the circuit at the time we've got our thousand microfarad cap and what I did is I threw this into spice to see if you know well I knew for a fact that if this voltage drop went away this cap was going to soar but I wanted to see how bad it was going to be and ignore that value right there with everything working we have a 97 volt drop created by the tubes across this resistor we end up with our roughly 6.8 volts at 50 milliampere the resistor is dip dissipating 4.8 watts and it's a 10 watt resistor oh that's absolutely fine everything's hunky dory then I came over here and I eliminated one of these resistors to simulate 
an open filament string in these three resistors. I left a 3S4 in circuit here. The voltage at this point right here shot up to like 26 volts right here. I say, well, that's not horrible. If I had a 25 volt cap in here, it would probably survive. Then I took this heater out of the circuit and this voltage soared up right over to 103 volts. It just climbed and climbed and climbed and just kept climbing. It took a little while because it was there's a thousand microfarad capacitor here. Oops. So the capacitor is going to explode. Then I added a 20 volt Zener diode right here. And this if I own this Crosley set, the first thing I do when I replace this thousand microfarad capacitor, you can get, you know, 200 volt thousand microfarad caps which would be fine. You could stick a 200 volt cap in there and it would survive just fine. But a 200 volt thousand microfarad cap is going to be four times bigger than that 50 microfarad or 50 volt uh, thousand microfarad that I put in there. It's going to take up a lot of real estate and they're expensive. Uh, I priced them out. They were anything from you know well five dollars plus like four bucks to ship it or uh, I think the Nichicon, or was it the Chemicon, one of them was like $12 plus $5 shipping. I've got a bin full of the smaller caps and I just couldn't see spending that kind of money. Well, it turns out I went on Mauser and sniffed around. Oh, I've got Zener diodes. I've got a 20 volt Zener that's, i got a drawer full of them that are one watt. But with the tube gone, the uh, Zener diode will be dissipating nine tenths of a watt right here 0.9 watts but I went on Mauser and found out they've got 20 volt zeners at 3 watts that are only 36 cents a pop so if this was my radio and I had one of these Crosleys I would be putting one of these Mauser 20 volt 30 watt zener or 3 watt zeners right here clamp that voltage to 20 volts if this tube filament fails save my capacitor you know nothing bad's going to happen and what I would actually do is buy 10 of these for three dollars and sixty cents throw nine of them in my drip my bin of uh, Zener diodes and put one in the radio but this is the type of stuff that wakes me up in the middle of the night believe it or not I came down here I figured this out I put the Zener in I looked up the prices and I said now I can go to sleep how's that for nerding out so, if you have a Crosley model uh, 56 or 56A uh, PA or PB, you might want to think about throwing a 20 volt Zener diode in here to save your filter cap, unless you went out and spent the $12 on a very expensive capacitor. And uh, you can sleep at night knowing that if one of your tubes fail, one of the filaments goes open you're not going to lose your filter capacitor right here. And incidentally, I took the filter out and ran the circuit uh, feeding at AC at 125 volts and the ripple without the filter cap is like 5 volts, on <laughs> 5 or 6 volts in these tubes and it was like 60 volts over here without this 40 microfarad. I put these in and it went down to millivolts. So those capacitors are working very efficiently across those two resistors. You've actually got a pie filter. Ignore this shunt. This doesn't exist. I just did that so when I ran the simulation I could put a current probe here. Uh, the uh, SPICE program I've got won't let me measure current on a wire unless I have a shunt or a resistor. So I put an extremely low value resistor, 0.0001 ohms. So I could stick a current probe here and here and here and check out what was going on in detail. And this just represents the tube draw, the cathode current. So, and oh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, this is actually just a little pie filter. You've got a cap, a resistor, and another cap. You got a little pie filter for the B plus, and you have a pie filter here using a cap, a resistor, and a cap on the heaters very efficient they work well at least in the simulation program okay that's it hope somebody found that fun and interesting uh, 
This one had me going around in circles for a while, especially when I first looked at the schematic in this format. And I you know, was wondering what the heck was going on here. Then I drew up, uh, whoops, come on. I drew up this guy. And it was clearer, but I was still not understanding it. It took several hours in the afternoon that I did this. And then I did this guy up and uh, had a much clearer picture of what was going on. And that's when I went to bed. And then I had to get up at 2 a.m. and come down and run a spice simulation just to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. Because <laughs> I kept saying, that cap's going to explode if the tube filaments go open. So if you got one of these sets and it has the original 10 volt, uh, 1000 microfarad in, of course it's going to be dried up and dead anyway. But if one of your heaters is open, I can almost guarantee this capacitor is gone. Poof. Hope everybody had a good Christmas 2021 and uh, we'll drop something, maybe drop another one before the New Year's or maybe right after New Year's. Uh, I've been working on the cabinet for the Triad. It's coming along slowly. Uh, I'm trying not to make any mistakes. And when that gets done, we'll put the I'll put a string of videos together. I'll break them up into half hour segments and uh, we'll put up that restoration for you. That's it. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye.